Hey everybody, Chris Gethin here and welcome to another episode of the Knowledge and Mileage podcast. I am uh, walking on my treadmill desk here because I've just got out of a nice bath and it's going to take me a while to warm up here, maybe by the end of this episode. But I have two phenomenal people uh, on this episode uh, from Boulder, Colorado at the moment, and that is Adrian and Rhett. How are you people? Doing great, Chris. Thank you so much. We're great, Chris. I actually got a uh, cold bath in this morning as well. So just oh, got you did? Up How, about an hour ago. How long were you in there for? How long were you in there for? Uh, well, I run down to the creek uh, near my house, which is about a mile away. Um, today I did a few miles uh, be- before it too, jumped in and um, I was in for about four minutes and then it's a mile run back and that's a cold run. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I, I find if I'm in there for like three minutes, I can warm up pretty good. But if I'm in there for like five minutes or longer, which I definitely was this morning, then I have a hard time warming up. But I know my blood sugar levels are going to be low. So uh, that's a good thing. But anyway, guys, so you are the founders of NED, okay, CBD brand or hemp brand, however you'd like to refer to it. But we'll get into that in a second. But one thing, you know, one of the reasons why I really wanted you guys on the show is because, and we've had a conversation about this, is that the CBD or hemp industry is like the wild west out there. It seems like every influencer that we know or that I know is representing a CBD brand. And I know coming from the supplement industry, it can be unregulated. It can be the wild west. How do you know that if you are, you know, following an influencer, if you're purchasing a CBD or if you're purchasing a supplement, how do you know for sure that it is authentic? It is saying exactly what is being suggested in the marketing material. It is so confusing out there. There's so much contradicting information. Should I go for isolates? Should I go for full spectrum? It's all over the shop. So that's why I really wanted to get you guys on the show because I know what you've done with your brand and looking into your backstory and your certificate of analysis, your third party tests and everything, you guys have done it the right way. But before we go into that, can you give us a little bit of a backstory of where you were before you started, Ned, and how you guys kind of got together to begin this brand? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, you know, it, um, it kind of started with my mom. She was diagnosed with breast cancer back in 2014, and um, we were super lucky, and they caught it very early. Uh, she had very good doctors, um, and uh, basically, she was able to make the decision safely um, and say, instead of going through chemo and radiation, I'm just going to um, battle my cancer through nutrition and movement and positive thinking. And, um, and I thought that that was a very brave decision, but it scared the hell out of me because I knew she knew very little about what that meant. And, um, being here in Boulder, Colorado, I'm surrounded by health nuts of all stripes, everyone from shamans to MDs and, uh, and had a bit of a background myself. I've been, um, you know, very focused on, on health and nutrition since uh, I'd say about 2000, um, and so did a deep dive for my mom, uh, trying to figure out what would be best for her to actually fight her cancer through nutrition. And one of the things that kept coming up over and over was CBD uh, and the full spectrum of cannabinoids. And uh, so I started buying them for my mom and uh, started using them myself. I'm an endurance athlete and you know always inflamed and sore and uh, sick of taking Advil and wanting something more natural. Um, So I was buying CBD for my mom and I was sending it to her in Dubai. She was a professor there at the time. And uh, so I was sending it illegally and, and I was buying these brands that just offered me almost no transparency. And and I had all these, you know, very simple questions like where's your hemp grown and how's it extracted? And why are you in business? What's your mission? And I wasn't getting the right answers. And and I spent two years really bouncing from one brand to the next and, not developing any sort of loyalty or affinity for any of them. And uh, it just didn't feel right. And, and so uh, in the summer of 2017, uh, I decided I would kind of learn a bit more about it. And, and, uh, and so I started finding out where the farmers were from 
and I started going and visiting them um, all over Colorado. And I like driving country roads. And I like meeting people and, and I was meeting them in their farms and they were good people and, and good farmers. But for the most part, they were only talking about how efficient they were and how cheap their crop was. And, and uh, you know, and it just struck me as, as just pretty unimpressive. Um, and I knew that there was something better out there. And at the same time, I kept hearing about this one farmer out in Paonia who had been a, a marijuana farmer for a decade. And he uh, supposedly was, was growing uh, very pure, clean, organic, biodynamic hemp. Um, and he was focused on, instead of uh, quantity, he was focused on quality. And I was trying to meet this guy all summer long. And it turned out my sister knew him. And she made an intro to us in September of 2017. And I got to see Paonia. And Paonia, it, if you're in, in, into farming, you've heard about Paonia. It's, um, it's just this amazing place on the western slope of Colorado with a, just an incredible microclimate, amazing soil, 330 days of sun. And then the farmers, they're all very well connected to each other. And, and so they share this amazing brain trust of knowledge that goes back, you know, a, uh, 110 plus years. It's, um, it's a place that's really well known for having great um, peaches and orchards, cherries, but um, it's also becoming a, a great place for hemp. And so seeing this place and the mentality of the farmers, um, I knew we had something and, um, and I wanted it to be about creating a company with the transparency that was lacking for me as a consumer. And so went out and spent an entire summer looking for the very best hemp there was and, and, um, and found it and then found our extraction facility, which was extracting in a very clean, pure, gentle, slow, also very expensive method, um, which is a cold ethanol extraction. And I decided I'd put my own company together, but I needed a, a partner and, and that partner was, was Adrian. And as soon as I put those two small pieces together, I called him up and, uh, and said, I got something here. And he was like, what the hell are you talking about? But uh, I'll let him take it from there. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, in 2017, when, uh, when I got that call from Rhett, I was, I was just coming back from really what I call my spirit quest. Um, you know, and to take a step back, uh, that really started in 2015. Uh, I had spent a decade in New York City and really doing that typical work grind. It was, you know, work, work hard, play hard, you know, make money, spend money. And, um, you know, reached the point where I was 32 and I checked off all these boxes and I, uh, I was very much living the life I thought I wanted and came out the back end of it with just this like crazy emptiness and didn't really have the tools to, to confront it. And so I just suppressed it and, at the same time, I'd been on the board of a company out, out in the UK. Uh, so I was like, okay, I'll go out to the UK. It's definitely the place. It's not the person. So a change of scenery will make me all better. And I'll just get back to quote unquote, crushing it. And, um, and I was out there uh, for the first month and it was great. And it felt exciting and new. And then I just started waking up with that same feeling again of just like, time is just flying by my life doesn't feel like it's my own and uh, I'm just trapped and um, continue to suppress it. And then about six months into that gig in the UK, it all just erupted and, um, and it, it erupted in the form of, of a full blown panic attack I had in front of my entire company. We had about 75 employees at the time that, and I was running the company uh, as an executive director. And it was just like a, a incredibly scary moment. I had never experienced anything like that before. And, um, and I just kind of broke in that moment, you know, the next day I walked into the boardroom and had another panic attack. And uh, a couple of days later, I broke out in shingles. And there was then this like physical manifestation of all this discontent that I was feeling and this like inability to, to just deal with these questions I had. Um, and then I was at a crossroads. You know, I, I was basically getting fired. Uh, you know, I, uh, you know, had placed so much self-worth into 
into what I was doing professionally. And then all of a sudden I was getting pushed out the door and uh, yeah. And that crossroads was like, okay, I can go see a shrink and, and get some anxiety medicine and try to keep going. Or I can actually like really take a step back and try to try to look inwards and try to figure out what was happening there. And I was very fortunate that I was able to choose the latter and um, took off on what I thought might be, you know, two months and turn into two years of just kind of wandering. Uh, went to 30 countries on that trip and really, really just started to, to kind of peel back the layers and, and coming out of that time away was able to really understand a few things. Um, the first was just how essential a connection with the outdoors is. It's, it's, essential to our human nature like it was home for for many 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 hundreds of thousands of years um and understanding just how good that was for the human soul to to have a relationship with the outdoors second was was really rebuilding a relationship with simplicity uh, i went from this you know high spending life in new york and london and um having all sorts of shiny toys to living out of a backpack with a few belongings for two years and uh, getting by on a few dollars a day and hitchhiking and, and just understanding like, you know, how, how much uh, fulfillment can come from the simple things, things like simple skills like chopping wood and learning how to gut a fish and tying boat knots. These things that like were super essential to our, our human history and uh and i just didn't have any sense of by sitting in front of a computer and uh and then finally probably the most important part was understanding just really what human connection meant and uh and understanding that human connection really starts with a greater sense of self-honesty uh which really allows you to be honest with others and um you know when you're vulnerable and honest you lo and behold, make really strong, deep and immediate connections because there's nothing really, you know, in the way. Um, so, you know, in 2017, I was landing back in the U.S. after this crazy two years away and just really like stepping, stepping away from everything. And, um, you know, Rhett and I had been buddies for 10 years and, uh, you know, already when I was traveling, anytime I'd pass through the U.S., he'd give me a call and we'd go for a hike. And it was already back then that we really started thinking like, yeah, we should do something together at some point. We just had no idea what it was going to be. Um, and then in the meantime, Rhett was kind of campaigning for me to move to Colorado. He was like, dude, like this is your place. And we had both gone to, to college here in Colorado in, in Boulder. So um, yeah, so I made the move out summer of 2017 and it was uh, a couple months later that I got the call and and Rhett was out of breath and just super excited. Like, it's not actually all that abnormal for Rhett. He's, <laughs> he's always excited. Uh, but, uh, but this time was different. And he's just like, dude, I found it. Like, I think we, we got something here. And um, it was very quickly that I realized that there was uh, a great opportunity, not from a business sense, but to really be able to put a message out into the world through a brand and through products and a mission that, uh, that would be meaningful and could be reflective of both of our stories. Um, you know, the true sense of honesty, a true sense of transparency, you know, really owning this badge of, of plants before pills. And I say before pills, not over pills, just because, um, you know, there's always a place for Western medicine and, uh, you know, we should never discredit science uh, and we should say modern medicine because uh, a lot of what we do is also backed by science. But um, yeah, it was, it was really an opportunity to, to, to build something meaningful and, and do it the right way, which is, you know, I'd been in the startup world for, for a long time and, and doing something, you know, taking, making the right choice at every turn rather than, the cheaper way, the faster way, you know, sell, sell, sell. Like it was, uh, it was a different approach. And, um, and over the last two plus years, it's really, uh, really proven to be effective. 
Yeah, it, and it definitely sounds like a very authentic calling that both of you had. It's not something that you've both intentionally gone out looking for. It's like you were called to it, you know, based on your background with your anxiety, based on your background, obviously with, with your mother, and then, you know, trying to reconnect with nature after you've both been in like in New York and in, in, in London, quite the opposite. So let me ask you, Adrian, when you were dealing with the anxiety and you said you kind of went interest, introspective to see what was going on, was it because of your work? Was it because of your diet? Was it because, you know, you're, you're placed in a place of highly populated, you know, area? You know, was it a combination of all of these things? Did you find out what the anxiety issue was stemmed from? Yeah, I mean, it was it was a number of factors. Um, but, you know, I think a, a big part of it and why I said human connection was was the most important was that a lot of it had to do with the fact that I just was not being honest with myself. You know, there was a voice inside of me that I was saying, OK, like the way I'm living my life is not totally aligned with with me, uh, whether that was my human nature or just me as a as a as a personality. Um, you know, and I think, you know, I, I found myself in a pattern that was, you know, really three, three things. It was, it was work hard and make money. It was date and, uh, you know, be super social. And, and then it was like party. And it was, you know, I found that all three of those things are really just their own form of endorphin. Uh, you know, and it was, uh, it was, it was, it all of a sudden turned into this little triangle that I couldn't escape. It was a cycle where it was like, okay, if there's an imbalance in one of those three things, I'm going to lean harder into the others. And it never really created the room to, uh, to, to look, get above it and to explore, uh, you know, explore other ways of being. And, and then I think the, other part of it was like so much of my self-worth was just attached to that person I become. So it was like the idea of detaching myself from that person that I'd try, been trying to build for the last 10 years was incredibly scary. So, so that I think really added to that feeling of being stuck and not having the tools. And, um, you know, it was only when I was able to really step away uh, and detach from everything and expectation and, um, and just be me in the world and, and, you know, delve into spirituality by accident, really, uh, that I was able to start kind of getting altitude on the way I was living my life. And, uh, and that just blew the doors open for this, uh, this new way of approaching life and relationships and just, a. a a new way of being that felt much more aligned. Yeah. So yeah, it, it was quite the contrast of a journey that you went on straight after, you know, going from being in highly populated areas where you've under a lot of stress with your workload, then to just traveling for the next couple of years. You know, it's uh, quite the contrast. And I should imagine it was uh, probably, you know, like, like since then, let me ask you this. Since then, have you had any problems with uh, anxiety? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, and I still, I still do. Uh, but I think the, the, the big difference is I'm not hiding from it uh, and I'm not denying it. And, you know, I say, you know, when I had that panic attack, it was my first time having a panic attack, but it wasn't my first time feeling anxiety. And I would just never allow myself to acknowledge that. So when I was able to acknowledge that, that just kind of like shifted the way I was dealing with it. And, you know, it was kind of like I was carrying this like slippery, slippery, cumbersome, you know, big weight on my back. And now it's like I have a wheelbarrow for it. You know, I can just kind of push it, push it along with ease. But, you know, I, uh, I definitely still, still have anxiety and, um, you know, I'll have bouts where if I'm not taking care of myself or I'm not eating well or not moving that it can certainly come back and force. And, and then the one thing that's really stuck with me, um, you know, I think due to the, the way that I had my panic attack was, was just this like fear of public speaking took hold, uh, which I never had before. 
and uh, and it's something that I've had to do a lot of work on, and I've done a lot of experimenting everywhere from different types of breathing to psychedelic treatments to uh, to you know of course uh, using a lot of different plant medicines and uh, you know our product of course is is part of that but um, but yeah I think it's a you know the the, the lens that I, I look at the world from now in terms of things like anxiety is like you know they might be there and that's okay it's not something to be ashamed ashamed of or something to hide uh it's more like okay it's there and that, now what uh and all of a sudden it doesn't become that scary uh when you're just acknowledging it for what it is which is just this like thought it's like a brain chemical and uh and we can we can get beyond it yeah for sure. And uh, Rhett, there's uh, some similarities with your backstory. Well, just a little bit that I'll touch on now. So for instance, uh, so as an example, this is going back for oh, about four years ago now, uh, my father was experiencing a little uh, discomfort in his hips, you know, and uh, the ideology was that he needed hip replacements. But being very stubborn and, you know, an older person, he's like, I'm not going to bother having hip replacements. I'm just going to keep going until the, uh, the wheels fall off. And we were in India last year and uh, he had a little bit of discomfort. They didn't disclose any to myself and my uh, mother, but then he started when he was, he was up at a high altitude somewhere. I think that was up towards like Kathmandu and he started peeing blood. And that's when he realized there was, there was something else amiss. But during this time, I'd, I was doing the same thing. I was mailing him CBD balm, and he's probably one of the most skeptical people you'd come across, you know, like CBD, you know, what's that? But when, and I didn't even tell him what it was to begin with, and uh, then he said, hey, that stuff that you gave me really, really worked. So I was just sending him this CBD. But then we found out after, when he came back to the UK and got some tests, that it wasn't the pain from the hip that was causing this discomfort. It was actually cancer of the kidney. So the CBD was actually alleviating him of the discomfort, weirdly enough, that he was getting from his kidney. He's since had that kidney uh, removed and uh, he's, uh, you know, I put him on a strict keto diet and he's in the clear at the moment. But I thought it was a bit of a coincidence how the CBD was an alleviation for these, uh, you know, different types of cancer. Like I actually put this on this morning. I'm actually wearing a waist belt at the moment because I, I did something to my back on the kettlebell swings a couple of days ago. So I've actually got one of those waist belts on with this CBD balm on, which is uh, the, the hemp, hemp body butter, which I think is absolutely phenomenal. So let's just talk about the CBD and hemp industry as a whole. As we mentioned, it is like the wild west out there, much like the supplement industry. The reason why I started my own supplement brand is because it was the same thing. I was actually putting my hand in my own pocket, getting some of the supplements that I was taking, tested because now I understood, okay, now I've got a platform, there's people watching me and I'm suggesting supplements, I better get them tested. And I was in shock when some of these brands that we'd all heard about, were coming really, really under par with these tests. What have you found as, gone, as being, you know, one of the more shocking things that you have found out about the CBD industry as a whole? And how can somebody navigate this minefield? Yeah, sure. It's a great question. And, um, you know, it's, it was a minefield I was trying to navigate four years ago when there really just wasn't much information and, and the knowledge out there has changed and grown and, and become more complete. Um, the cannabis plant is the most studied plant in the world, um, and yet there's still a tremendous amount that is yet to be learned. And um, it's really been our approach that until we have a far better understanding, and even probably then, uh, it's really just best to keep it as close to the way Mother Nature intended it as possible. And so that's why I was on such a quest to find the absolute best hemp there was in Colorado. 
Um, it's why I was so keen on having the best extraction methods and the ones that would really maintain the biological profile of the plant. So that's, um, it, it's a great question. Um, and there's a lot out there and, and you referred to it as the wild west and very much is. And, and by that, we mean that there's just really no rules and it's an unregulated industry. Um, there have been a number of studies um, that show a lot of the CBD companies don't even have any CBD in their product at all. Um, there's really not much stopping companies from, from doing such a thing. Um, so, you know, our approach has always been, again, to keep it as natural as possible, um, to think about the product and the customer first and the economics of it later. Um, you know, originally it was setting out to create something great for, for my mom and for myself and for our friends. Um, and it's, it's grown tremendously since then. But, um, but there are a number of things that one can look for when looking for a high quality uh, CBD or full spectrum hemp product. And um, full spectrum is, is one of those. Uh, CBD is just one of many, many cannabinoids that are found in the plant. It's really the uh, kind of the, the most famous or maybe the second most famous after THC. Um, but CBD gets a lot of the credit these days and rightfully so. It's kind of like we look at it as like the, the lead singer in a rock band, right? So, um, you know, gets all the, the fame and glory um, on the cover of the album, but without the drummer and the bassist and the guitar and the sound guy and the lighting guy, you're not getting the full package. And, and that's really the way it is with cannabinoids. Um, it's called the entourage effect. And so if you're getting just an isolated CBD, you're not getting the rest of the benefits. You're just getting the lead singer acapella, fine, but uh, not good enough. So, so that's one thing, always look for full spectrum. The next thing, as I've already mentioned a couple of times, um, look for, the extraction method. There's a number of them out there. Um, a lot of people will claim, you know, everybody who's doing one will claim theirs is the best. But um, if you talk to all the true hemp people, um, those that really know that um, really the cold ethanol extraction using organic ethanol is, is the purest, cleanest, most gentle. Also, the, it takes the longest and it's the most expensive. Um, but it, it results in a, in a product that, again, it has maintained the biological profile um, as close as possible to the plant. So that's the method we use. And, and again, we, we go to a lot of time, trouble and expense to do it. Uh, we don't have to. Again, it's entirely unregulated. But um, we're, you know, we're really looking for quality here. So, um, so that's another thing. Then you should find you know, the company that you're buying your full spectrum hemp from should have their COAs, their certificates of analysis, basically their third party lab results. They should be plastered everywhere. You should not have to go looking for them. There should be no trouble uh, clicking on a COA and reading it for yourself directly from a lab with the signature and the certificates there. So, so that's another thing. That's the third thing. Um, you know, those are really, once you find those, you're, you're off to a good start. If you've got a full spectrum that's cold ethanol extracted with good COAs. Um, and then, you know, we actually help people read those COAs. So they're lab reports, they're, they're difficult to, to digest. Um, so you should, uh, you should be able to read those COAs. You should see, for instance, that there's no pesticides or heavy metals um, in the plant. Um, and there's a number of, of things that you should be looking for. So, so those are really the main three um, and once you've got that, I would dig in on, on who, the why of the company. You know, what are they in business for? Um, are they there just to make money? Are they jumping on a trend? Or is it bigger? Um, what do they do for charity? What do they do for their community? How do they support their, their, uh, their customers and members? So, you know, there's a lot of factor that, factors that go in. And, and two and a half years ago when we launched, um, you know, we were among the very few that were doing this. Uh, we still remain so in the grand scheme of things, but, um, but there's also people who are, are very good at marketing. So just be on your toes and, and then look for authenticity. Um, 
you know, does it feel right? Does it feel like uh, a kind of company I want to get behind? So, you know, CBD, full spectrum hemp, it really, it's better used with consistency. And it's through that consistency that you begin to see the results. It's not like a, you know, a one-time thing or you take it just when you're feeling pain. Um, so you want to find a brand that you can develop some loyalty and affinity towards. Right. Okay. Got it. So just like, let's say for an example, you know, especially for the people out there that are like in the bodybuilding or anything like that or endurance sports. So if they're taking creatine for them or carnosine, for instance, for them to get the benefit, they should be taking that every day. Is that the same sort of thing with, uh, with, with CBD, correct? It is. It, it is. And Adrian can speak more to it, but, um, but yeah, consistency is key. Um, go ahead, Adrian. Yeah, no, I was just going to jump in and say exactly that. Uh, consistency is incredibly important and it's, it's not an acute uh, treatment of anything. It's, uh, you know, so, and I think those expectations are really important to, to set out from the beginning. Um, you know, I think there are a lot of people with the expectation that, okay, I'm going to take, you know, a dropper of, of this oil and voila, all my pain's gone. I'm not feeling anxious. And and that's not really the case. And, and it's also just not a silver bullet. You know, it's, I think it's been touted in the media that uh, CBD is this, is this wonder plant that, you know, will fix everything where the reality is if you're drinking six cups of coffee in the morning and drinking a bottle of wine at night and, you know, eating a ton of sugar and drinking soda, like you're not going to feel good, even if you're taking CBD. So, uh, so, you know, I think those ex expectations are really important. Um, you know, and just, just to speak to a little bit about how, uh, you know, full spectrum hemp and cannabinoids and terpenes work in our bodies. Um, you know, we all have what's called an endocannabinoid system, and it's actually the largest system of extracellular receptors in the human body. Um, which I think is fascinating just because it wasn't even discovered until the mid nineties. Uh, when a number of Israeli uh, researchers were studying the effects of THC on the body. And what they found is that the system has two types of receptors. Uh, and I'll try not to get too sciencey, so stop me if I do. But there's CB1 receptors, which are found in the brain and central nervous system, and then CB2 receptors, which are found in uh, minor and major organs and, and throughout the body. Um, and you know, the science has shown that CBD uh, on its own as an isolate actually does not even bind to the receptors. Instead, it's actually kind of like changing the shape or the way we look at it is kind of like opening the door. Um, and it's uh, after that happens that all the other cannabinoids, the terpenes, trichomes, all these other constituents of the plant, um, that are then able to do their thing once CBD kind of activates the system. Um, you know, so, so yeah, and just, just to go beyond that, um, you know, cannabinoids are actually naturally occurring in our body uh, and our naturally occurring cannabinoids are called endocannabinoids. These are things like anandamide, which, uh, you know, tell our immune system how to respond to problematic cells. So these are, foundational foundational to our health and well-being and um you know it's uh you know it, they're found in breast milk it's like that foundational uh, and like many things with age or poor nutrition uh you know over time we can become deficient in these naturally occurring endocannabinoids so what cbd and all the other cannabinoids are doing is supplementing that are naturally naturally occurring endocannabinoids that might be deficient, might have created imbalance in our system. And by nourishing our system with these plant-based cannabinoids called phytocannabinoids, we're then supplementing uh, that system and bringing things back into balance. And, and that's what's really important to, to note is that it's all about balance. And, uh, you know, there's so many cascading health issues that can come from things like inflammation. Um, and if we're addressing inflammation at a root level and finding some balance, then, you know, that cascading, uh, sequence of, of conditions should be, should be limited. 
Right, got it. Now, I should have uh, probably asked this question towards the beginning, but I'm asking it now. Why have you decided to call your company NED, N-E-D? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a question we get a lot. And, um, and it, it really speaks to the ethos of the business. Um, you know, when Adrian and I decided we would partner and, and create a business, we didn't have a name yet. Um, but we went and climbed South Arapaho Peak, which is a 13,000 footer back uh, just west of Boulder. And, and we set out in, in October and uh, we had no idea that a freak blizzard was going to turn us away from the top. Um, we got shut down on the saddle and, and, uh, and sent back down. But, um, you know, we, we achieved a lot out of that expedition. And, and that was to really create the ethos and set the principles of the business before we'd even incorporated or had a name. And, um, and you know, doing that has been just uh, one of the most like practical um, steps we've ever taken because it's allowed us to create a framework for how we operate um, in every sense of the, of the word. And, um, and when it came time to, to select a name, you know, we, uh, we looked at the market and we saw a lot of like, you know, really um, serious sounding sciencey names. And then we saw a lot of like really, you know, hippy dippy sounding names. And we wanted to be, we wanted our brand to be incredibly approachable. I was recalling my conversation with my mom and, and it sounds like you too, Chris, with your dad about CBD. And she was like, I've never smoked marijuana in my life. I'm not going to start now. Are the cops going to come? Like, could you get in trouble? And, and, you know, we envisioned that conversation taking place all across the country and all around the world. And, um, and we wanted it to be like, no mom, you know, check out this brand. They're, it's called Ned and we wanted it to look incredibly approachable. Um, we wanted it to look more like a, like a beauty line or a bath product than a cannabis CBD kind of line. So, so, you know, Ned, um, Adrian came up with it. He, he was thinking about what are some, some great names in literature of farmers and uh, what are some trustworthy names? And we, we kind of came to a loss on, on uh, literary farmers, unfortunately, uh, which I've always found strange. But, um, but Ned seemed like the name of, of a farmer or a neighbor or a good friend or a an uncle that you you trust and he's the kind of guy you go to when you have a question about natural remedies or about um, you know fixing your sink or about spirituality or composition he's a, a renaissance man he's a worldly man um, you know he came from sort of the same background that Adrian and I had which was to kind of grow up in the in the world of of thought patterns whereby you get a job and, and you make as much money as you can and white picket fences and all that. And then he saw the light and went on a spirit quest and, and became a much more deep human being. And, um, and so he's got that knowledge that comes from a place of, of struggle and, and learning. And, um, you know, I personally aspire to be Ned. He is my, uh, he's, he's my hero. And, um, and a lot of people call me Ned <laughs> by accident. So, so that's how we came with, up with the name. Um, and we're sticking with it. All right, I like that. I, I thought there'd be some sort of reference to Ned the talking horse there somewhere, <laughs> but maybe it was a bit before your time. Yeah. 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 But no, I, uh, but, you know, this, this persona has just taken shape and it's, you know, it's it's funny because it it is so approachable that like everybody has their own reference of a Ned, like you just had the talking horse. Like some people are like Ned Flanders, and others are like, oh my, like you know my my uh, great uncle was named Ned, and he was like such a badass and he had a ranch, and um, you know it's just taking shape. And I think that's really what our intention was. It can be whoever and whatever it is you interpret it to be, uh, but it's so simple. And, uh, and that's a beautiful part of it. 
Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Got it. Now, is that a reason as well? Because you, you did, we discussed this about five or six weeks ago, and I thought it was quite interesting why you don't have like CBD all over your branding, where instead it's hemp. Is that again to allow it to be a little bit more appealing to the wider audience that may not be uh, quite as educated on, you know, like THC and CBD, et cetera? Uh, so no, uh, that's not the reason, um, you know, the reason really being that, um, you know, CBD as it's named is now an ingredient in an FDA approved pharmaceutical, uh, called Epidiolex. Uh, you know, CBD really hit the mainstream because it was so impactful in treating epilepsy in children and, um, and a pharmaceutical company has now jumped all over it and, uh, federal regulations say that companies that create supplements and nutritional products are not allowed to name ingredients uh, that are in pharmaceuticals on their labeling. So it's really a regulatory thing that uh, we discovered early. And uh, to, to Rhett's point before of like, you know, it's created a framework where we just make the you know, not always the easiest decision, but we make the right decision to, to call our product full spectrum hemp rather than CBD, which would be a lot more marketable and probably sell more bottles, but it's not the right way to do it. And, um, you know, I think it's, it's also a good, you know, kind of gut check if you're shopping for CBD, if there's CBD plastered on the label, like yeah, either that company doesn't care about the regulations or they haven't done their homework which are both fairly, uh, fairly alarming uh, things to look out for. So, um, so that's really why. And, and at the end of the day, like full spectrum is really what the product is. Uh, you know, we go through great lengths to preserve the biological integrity of the plant. We want to put out a product that is aromatic and has a lot of the natural essences. And, um, and that's what we should call it is full spectrum hemp. You know, because if you see a CBD isolate product, it might be clear. Uh, it might be, you know, strawberry flavored or uh, what was the one? Tiramisu flavored we saw, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, and then you see this, you know, you see CBD ice cream and you see CBD uh, lasagna and you see like, it's just outrageous at this point. It's, it, it's turned very gimmicky where at the end of the day, like the product as it's intended, uh, is, uh, you know, a science backed natural remedy that can really, truly help people. And, uh, and we want to honor that. Yeah, I, I, I totally get that. So basically, it sounds like in the future, they will be uh, enforcing CBD to be withdrawn from any marketing or any names of any companies. Is that correct? Yeah, well, it's already happening. Um, and a lot of companies have been forced to change their names and their marketing. But um, I say a lot, and that it's probably only a couple dozen. Um, there are many thousands of CBD companies out there. Um, so, but, you know, it's like Adrian said, it's just, for us, it's just not the right way. It also, we want to pay homage to the other cannabinoids that make up the full, beautiful product that it is. Yeah. Got it. And it's funny, when we had this con conversation about six weeks ago, I was like, yeah, I don't know about it being completely naturally flavored, you know, like the, 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 uh, the, mm -hmm. the dropper that I have here. But I absolutely love it now. Okay. I really, really do like that. I take this, um, I, I, I take the CBD dropper. This is how I do it personally. Whether it's right or wrong, I don't know. It works for me. But I take it one night on and one night off. And I find that it really helps with my deep sleep cycle. My REM is always very good, but it's my deep sleep that I lack. But this really helps with my deep sleep cycles. Could you tell us why this has such a profound effect on, I'm not saying everybody's sleep, but I know mine personally, why CBD has such a, an effect, positive effect on sleep? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there's a, a, lot, of, a lot of elements to it. Adrian uh, has a better... Um, gathering of this, the scientific elements, but um, uh, perhaps he's the better one to speak to this. The mind's all yours. <laughs> sure. So, um, 
Yeah, I mean, there are, uh, you know, sedative qualities to a number of cannabinoids. Um, you know, not all of them. And, uh, and cannabinoids react differently within everybody's body. So, you know, there are some people that actually get stimulated by cannabinoids. Uh, so, um, so that's why first and foremost, we, we always say it's important for people to do their own, uh, to be their own judge because everybody's different. Everybody, everybody can respond differently, but, um, but there are these sedative cannabinoids that can, can really take hold. And, um, you know, CBN is one that's actually not in our existing products, but I bring it up because we're very close to launching a sleep blend that's really supporting, uh, you know, deep sleep and REM sleep with, um, with not just the full spectrum hemp and elevated levels of CBN, but a number of other botanicals. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's really, uh, a matter of just this, this like kind of sedative effect that can take over and and um yeah i'm also trying to skirt the idea of making medical claims here so um but yeah it's it's uh you know the i would just refer to the sedative effect um but you know i've had the same experience i have a a nuba ring I think that's what it's called the new aura 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 aura, 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 aura ring aura, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 exactly that and i was tracking my sleep um did a one month experiment and did one night on one night off with our product and it was just this like saw's edge uh it was up and down up and down up and down totally consistent with our product uh anecdotal study of course but for me it was uh it was it was very clear um, about the the benefit to my own sleep. Yeah, I, another anecdotal study is me every night with my wife. Um, whenever she forgets to to take it, she's up and I can feel it. And whenever she takes her takes some Ned, um, man, we both sleep well. <laughs> yeah, interesting. So I guess people have to, uh, you know, like you said, play around with these sort of things because uh, you know, much like you, Adrian. I dealt with um, anxiety issues. Uh, I had major, major sleep problems that I uh, found out it was traced back to mold toxicity when I was li living in India. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sleep is something that I always try to quantify. So, you know, that's something, uh, you know, I love having the ring because it's like having a personal trainer to say, get your ass to bed. It's 8.30 already, you know? And uh, I just love waking up in the morning and my fiance has got one as well. And her mother's got one and we're all like part of this group. Okay. What was your readiness score? What was your REM deep? So I love really quantifying that because obviously if you're a physical, uh, if you're an athlete or, you know, an active person, we know that our performance mentally and physically is dictated by our recovery and there's sleep is when we recover. So if we can take something that is natural, that can enhance our sleep, of course, we're going to recover. We're going to perform uh, that much better. So when, when it comes to, like, obviously, like you mentioned earlier about you have the third, like I've seen the third party testing, the, the certificate of analysis all over your website, which is phenomenal. I love seeing that transparency. I wouldn't have you on the show. Otherwise that, you know, if, if it's not a company that I truly believe in, then I'm not going to endorse it. I'm not, I'm not going to utilize it myself. But I love that you have that transparency and, you know, after looking into other CBDs, you're talking about like this tiramisu flavor, you know, we know that this is supposed to help with inflammation. You know, I guess you guys got to be careful what you see it say with structure function claims and stuff like that. But it's, it's funny to me to see that other companies will have like artificial colors, artificial flavors or sweetener that, you know, sugar, sugar in there, which, you know, maybe they have gummies and we like, we know that's pro-inflammatory, you know, yeah. so they're totally contradicting each other. So like you said, you know, people are coming out with these ice creams or gummies and there's, there's just sugar in there and just artificial crap, you know, it's just a gimmick, you know, that's something that people can look out for that is very, very transparent. So now with, you know, you, you obviously I love the story that you have with your products now. And you said that, you know, we obviously can go through some of your products that you have like you have the, uh, the butter, like what do you, people utilize the butter for yeah. over 
say, the tincture? Why should someone choose one over another? Is it because of sports injuries, particular acute inflammation, where this is a little bit more systemic? How should one choose one of the other for different ailments? Yeah, yeah. So um, there's two, two ways of looking at it. One is kind of the inside out approach and the other is the outside in approach. And the outside in approach is, would be the body butter or the topicals. Um, and the topical is going to work to really target a specific point. And so it's really, you know, primarily people use it for um, joint and muscle pain. So if, you know, I love it because, you know, I, I get out there all the time. I'm, I do a lot of miles. Um, um, I use my body as much as, as I can. And so it goes on anything that's sore. And, um, and man, it's, it's a lifesaver because it allows me to recover faster. Um, and then there is, oh, you know, another good thing to mention is um, we've been getting amazing testimonials from people saying, I used it after, um, you know, a bad sunburn and oh my God, it's like, the, you know, it's, it's so healing. And honestly, I've been using it on, on a rash I've had on my face, um, a little bit of a rash and it's, I've tried a couple other things and, and I just started using this the other day and, and um, I'm going to keep using it it's uh it's working so so we're seeing a lot of other benefits to it as well now the inside out approach is really more for um you know people use it for inflammation and joint and muscle pain as well but it's also going to be used for anxiety and sleep um, also depression ptsd those are really the, the big uses of of the product um, you're not going to get um, the benefits or what you would be looking for with uh, anti-anxiety, depression, PTSD, uh, sleep through a topical, you're just not gonna get enough, absorb enough into your bloodstream. But um, so that's really why and, and which um, sort of areas of attack that you would want to use a, the inside out approach with. Got it. Okay. Right. I'm going to totally gross uh, you guys out and the listeners right now. But, you know, I, I, I do use this like on my elbows because like with a lot of work doing overhead tricep work, I do get a little bit of niggling information on my elbows. So that's where it's really handy. But I tell you what, where it is a home run is on my feet. I have dry feet. I'll blame my parents. It's nothing to do with me blame the genetics but like it is to the extent when the climate changes especially here in idaho being very dry air, air my feet crack they split mm -hmm. you know it's that bad very thick skin but this really helps with that so you know i don't know if that's uh, part of your testimonial uh, repertoire as yet but you can throw that in there <laughs> Thanks, well, <Chris>. yeah <laughs> we'll have to get we'll have to get that testimonial on the site yeah yeah, yeah. body you know, butter it's... helps chris's feet yeah there you go buddy <laughs> there you go but you know like obviously the majority of the listeners here are active individuals they're participating in mm -hmm. you know marathon spartan endurance uh, you know uh, mm -hmm. ironman triathlon bodybuilding powerlifting of course they're dealing with pain there's only so many clicks that people get of that, uh, that pen before it stops clicking altogether. And whatever we can do to alleviate that inflammation, much like, you know, I jumped in the ice bath this morning, I've seen in the videos as well, you jumping in the mm -hmm. ice lake as well. You know, obviously there's, it's, it's, it's like a, a three-legged stool. We gotta have the lifestyle, the nutrition, the training, and then obviously whatever we can do to fight that inflammation internally and externally as well, because, yeah, we want to improve our health span, but we want to kick ass while we're here as well. And if we can do that without the onset of injury or pain, then we're going to enjoy it. We're going to be a little bit, we're going to be passionate uh, about it. So it makes absolute sense that, you know, hemp, CBD, however you want to term it, is a part of that. Like you said, it's not just going to be for acute injuries. It's going to be systemically using it as a preventative as well, you know? So however it yeah. works for you may be completely different to someone else, but, you know, try before you buy. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, um, uh, I was listening to your episode with East Forest and, uh, and something really stuck with me, <clears throat> which was um, you talking about wanting to create 
you know, a connection between health, wellness, fitness, nutrition, and, and really creating that and looking at it as, as one in the same. And I, I just love that sentiment because, um, you know, it's when you're able to do that, that it becomes a lifestyle and it becomes something that just gains traction, momentum, and it's building blocks upon blocks. And eventually it's, it gets to the point where you don't even have to think about it. And instead of fighting an uphill battle going up upstream, you know, you're all of a sudden you're fighting downhill and, and you're going with the flow and you're in flow. And it's then that you can really begin to thrive and, and you can start addressing other parts of your life, like relationships and business and, and, you know, all of the, the other things that we've, we've got to, uh, to do as functioning human beings. But uh, until you've really got that all in balance, it's, um, you're just fighting up an uphill battle. So I loved your sentiment around that. And, and, you know, this is part of what, a, a very small part of what goes into to creating that like true wholeness of a human being. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Well, thank you very much for recognizing uh, that episode with East Forest. I should connect you guys. I think you guys may get on like a house on fire. <laughs> yeah. I got the same uh, sense. Girl. In fact, he, uh, he, he talked a lot about Boulder, Utah, which is my absolute yeah. favorite place in the world. And uh, it's where I found the vision for, or where I found my purpose was just outside of Boulder, Utah, in the Canyonlands of Escalante. Yeah. Um, and that purpose is to help as many people as possible reconnect with the powers of nature. So, um, yeah, a lot of connections uh, with, with East Forest. Yeah, cool. and my, my girlfriend and I actually just did one of his, uh, one of his ceremony uh, tracks just lying here on the living room floor. Um, it was incredible. And That's she's awesome. absolutely obsessed with them. So we'd love to connect. Um, I think that would be uh, a very aligned uh, human connection. Yeah, he's just come out with an album like last month. It's either last month or this month. I think it's last month called, uh, I think it's Music for Chaotic Times. Mm. And uh, like there's two versions of that, uh, that album. One is with meditation, guided meditation. And the other one is just without, just with the music itself. It's really, really good, especially for this time. People need it. Mm -hmm. All right. And people need this right now if they're dealing with anxiety. So number one, I want to thank you guys ever so much for coming on the show uh, because, you know, it, at least if, if people uh, are going to like McDonald's or fast food, fast food restaurant, they know what they're getting. But if people go and purchase a supplement, they should expect that that's going to help their health and performance in some way, shape or form. We're, and in the CBD or hemp industry, people expect the same. However, if they're getting pesticides, if they're having heavy metal contaminants, even if they aren't you know, getting the actual CBD, like you said, in some of the products, there's no CBD at all. You know, that's obviously where there's a lot of contradictory information that a lot of people have to navigate. You know, in retrospect, if you think about it in comparison, going to the fast food restaurant is so much simpler because you know what you're getting. You know it's possibly something that's harming you. Well, you don't expect that in the, in the hemp uh, industry at all. So thank you ever so much for creating clarity there and obviously put it out a product that is very authentic with a lot of transparency and a, you know, a phenomenal story uh, behind it. So you guys are actually giving all of our listeners 15% uh, off everything. And you actually have some products, obviously you have the aromatherapy oils or the essential oils that are first extraction as well. And I, I'm, I'm an expert when it comes to essential oils, so I absolutely love that. So the link is everybody to get that 15% off. If you go to www. That's hello, Ned, H E L L O N E D dot com forward slash Gethin, G E T H I N, that will give you 15% off. And I will put that link in the show notes and I'll add everything, including the uh, link to the video that I mentioned earlier and the link to the website. So you can check out Ned 
for yourselves. Thank you ever so much, guys. If there's anything that you want to add, please feel free. You can right now. <laughs> You've got the mic. Hey, thank you, Chris. Well, uh, I actually just realized when I was searching for my ring name, I said Nuba Ring, and I actually realized what that was, and it's a birth control contraption. So, <laughs> wow, <laughs> I just had to address that little moment of embarrassment and just just put it out there so I, that's I funny see I, i've never that. even heard of that i'm not that in touch with my feminine side uh, so i just wanted to uh make those my final words so i uh, okay I have to noodle on that for yeah well i'll uh i'll just i'll just say thank you chris you know it's um it's really important that we're able to connect with people who can tell the story we we really set out to with an ethos of, of show don't tell, but um, so it's important for us to connect with, with storytellers. So just want to thank you for, for having us on and, and giving us a platform. Really appreciate it. No, appreciate it. And uh, when you come out with that new product for sleep specifically, maybe we can have you guys back on because that is one area of my life that I'm still biohacking as much as I possibly can. Yeah, right, we'll love thank to. You so Absolutely. much, guys. Do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay, and next time I'll over be over that way. Maybe we'll go hike some mountains, or vice versa. If you're over in the Idaho mountains, Let's yes, Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll show you the cold right, course. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much, guys. Okay, the pleasure is all mine. So, everybody, that is another episode of the Knowledge and Mileage podcast. As I mentioned, if you go to the show notes, everything that we've spoken about today is right there. And the code and the link for the 15% off all NED products is there also. Until next week, I am Chris Dethin, and I am out. Awesome, Thanks, guys. Chris. That was Thank great, you so Chris. much. No, really, yeah. really appreciate that. Yeah, on, likewise. Man. Really, 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 uh, yeah, just love these conversations. I mean, it's always a fun way for, for Rhett and I to just get back to this place of, like, remembering really why we're doing this.